How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to a video here with me, Arno Schmidt. We're playing Ragdos Aggro in Standard. This is the deck that was just successful on the weekend of the Legacy European Tour event in Prague, where they had a Sunday Standard Qualifier. Of course, in addition to the big modern event that started on Saturday and was, uh, I believe, taken down by Amulet Titan. Yeah, and uh, in the standard qualifier, a Rakdos Aggro uh, deck made the top eight, and both Rakdos Aggro and Rakdos Midrange um, had some of the highest win rates in the 100 people event. I'll post the description, uh, sorry, in the description, I'll post the, the entire link to the tournament so you can. Uh, yeah, swift through, sift, sift, right, sift is the correct word, sift through the decklist yourself and uh, see some of the Rakdos decklists that succeeded. And yeah, we're going to take uh, this list, uh, I believe by Piotr, my last name, mm, let me check real quick, Piotr Victor Zak, um, yeah, who top it. congrats, qualifying for the regional championship in Naples. So what do we got here? We got some of the finest two drops in standard blood type harvester still around, still amazing, even without fable, just an excellent rate of a card. Deep Cavern Bat, amazing two drop that we recently received. And then of course we got Inti here, which is a very strong card as well. Um, less synergies here than maybe in like a Smuggler's Copter, Rakdos midrange build in uh, Pioneer or Explorer. Um, but still, you have like blood tokens to sacrifice, and uh, it triggers itself. You just have to attack, put some counters, skip trample, da 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 da. Tenacious Underdog, long time no see, aggressively slanted a two drop, also works well with this card. So, with Inti, you can just ditch it and then get back later. Uh, free cut down for Go for the Throat, like bread and butter removal spells, Preacher Gigs, you know, the best free drops, I guess. That we can build uh, in a black mid rangey aggro deck. And then a little bit of a surprise free main deck of Nixilis. Um, this card, being a planeswalker, is quite good against sweeper effects, of course. So, for example, ill time explosion out of the Timor uh, lands deck, and uh, of course, Sunfall, Depopulate, and so on. Don't touch the Nixilis, and therefore um, you, you gain a huge edge, I would guess against Domain, against Blue-White, against the Teemo deck by playing Obnixus in your main deck, right? Even though it's not the greatest card um, in creature matchups. It's not that good at defending itself and uh, yeah, sacking a creature is a real cost um, against those types of decks because board presence is very important, of course. But against Blue-White Control, hey, you happily sack away a creature to get a second Obnixus because they cannot really deal with this thing effectively especially if it comes uh, in a duo. So yeah, pretty cool addition here. And then we have six four drops, uh, Archfiend of the Draws four times and Shieldred two times. Archfiend, four mana, six, six flying, um, just a huge threat, drains the opponent whenever a creature of theirs dies. Um, this thing gets the game over with very quickly. You don't have to be afraid of the downside. Um, it, you have you 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 you'll have won the game until if, if that stick if that if this thing sticks around for that long, you will have won the game um, until then. So yeah, um, as mana base we have only two restless wins. That's actually interesting. I think I'm gonna add a first. <laughs> like come on, man lands are pretty good, especially in an aggressive deck, especially against sweeper type decks like. Just man lands are so good, so I, I like playing uh, free at least. Two caverns against counter spells, and the rest is pretty standard. Nothing to see here. And then we have a uh, sideboard to rest, a braid, two unlicensed turrets against Timor lands, uh, Gixus command against the creature decks. We have Hidetsugu consumes all and Brotherhoods and both against Convoke, of course, in addition to the Gixus command. Very excellent there. One copy of D end. Yeah, flexible kill spell. Uh, I guess you can exile, I don't know, Traxa or Nissa, maybe out of the Timo combo deck, who knows. Uh, one copy of Aglazots for the Black Midrange Mirrors, and then two copies of Cruelty of Gigs down here. Um, those mainly for Domain, I would guess, um, and I, you could bring them in, I guess, in any deck with like Carnosaurs and a Reanimator matchup, because you can always steal the opponent's creature as well. Just like sort of a powerful five mana grindy card. 
Um, notably, no Lilianas at all in the stack. The stack empties their hand, the hand quite quickly, so I'm yeah, a bit surprised to not see a single Liliana of the Veil. I would think that the card is quite good here. But yeah, I'm going to run with this list for now. I only made one change. I guess I made two changes. I just added the, the third vent. I also added a fourth bat. There was a split between underdog and bat, uh, three and three. Um, I, I really like the discard of the bat, the, getting to see the opponent's hand, getting to interact with them. We only have creature interaction um, besides the bat, so I just want to maximize on that effect. I could also see running four duress, honestly. I think duress is pretty excellent. Yeah, in any case, uh, that is Rakdos Aggro. Um, yeah, they're sort of new deck. At least I've never seen something like this. Uh, or uh, not, not never, but not in the last um, cycle of Standard. I haven't seen a deck like this. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of excited to see how, how this plays out. All right, let's jump into the ladder. I would love to play first. Uh, yeah, I think this is fine. If I hit a third land and it's going to be a swamp, then I'm I'm golden. Otherwise, I have the NT to also help me hit that third land. And we can start with the bat here. Hopefully, no cutdowns. All right. Huh. Um. Yeah, they have two two drops, so that's not optimal. Um. Ah, uh, stuff. I don't know. I mean, I guess I'll take the fairy maybe, but nah. Then they make this appear, then they play the fairy block. They have the preacher, which lines up very well against my gigs. <laughs> don't love this. Yeah, I'll just take the fairy. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Spot. Okay, so here I could just pass the turn and then go for the throat there, Preacher. I think I like that. That was a good draw. And then if I draw land, that, that's going to be nice. Oh, that is unfortunate for me. They're going for the conservative line here. Damn. I'll just keep passing. I don't think I can afford to cast something main phase. And then day untap, play something. Like, I'm just going to be in a world of hurt. I'm going to ba basically play from behind at all times. So I'm just hoping they tap out for a free drop. They're not even attacking, but they're interesting. Um, they're missing land drops as well now. Yeah, I'm just going to pass again, honestly. I'm not going to make... You'd be able to spend your two mana there. Just keep passing, yeah. Okay, that, that was a good draw. Now we can go one of our two drops here. I guess just the bat. I might just take the make disappear, honestly. Oh, they have two. And now I'm going to take the bat then. So if they draw land here, that wouldn't be great. Looks like they didn't. I could kill the siren. Huh. Could also just play the inti. I think I'm gonna do this. They're probably going to respond with the make disappear here. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to play in team. And then I'm going to not attack. Just play my land and pass the turn again.
Hmm. <laughs> okay, I think I'm just gonna do this and see what they do. They could sack the siren to counter it with make disappear, but then I can play gigs and draw two cards with the bats. That is just such a nice combo with the gigs. Like, if you're playing a deck with three gigses, I would just always play four bats. That's sort of, you know, I don't know, seems logical to me. I do see the appeal of the free two, the Tenacious Underdog. Just hits hard, gets the game over with. Has the blitz. All right, opponent's going for it. Losing the 2-2 flyer, which was kind of holding the fort here against my bats. So this is not that bad for me, honestly. Like, I get to draw two cards. I could even draw more if I wanted to. The Inti here. Mm, do I want to? Maybe just cut the gigs. I mean, yeah. If I hit a land, I even get to play it, which is kind of nice. Otherwise, it's just an extra counter. Opponent's gonna attack me with the bad guy like this. I have one unknown. The gigs. Um, uh, I'm gonna leave it. Okay, I would have hit the land. <laughs> Should have done it. Okay. A little bit of a cat and mouse game. I missed my land drop for a couple of turns, but my opponent also missed their land drop and didn't do anything, just keeping up the make disappear. I think it might actually be reasonable to double block. Maybe it's crazy. Hmm. Uh, it's probably crazy. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, okay, I'll, I won't do it. I'm not sure, though. Also, no Murex in this list, I guess. That is a bit annoying. I didn't want to see that. Okay, it's a 1-1. One, one. Blood tie V Harvester. Hmm... To do what to do. I think I could I could play Arch Fiend, give a counter to Inti by discarding Nixilis maybe. And then attack everybody, they block one of these, get one back. They also take a bunch of damage. The Arch Fiend deals them a bunch of damage. Uh yeah. Okay. I, I think I think I'm sort of happy with that, yeah. This card, I think the Hunter Rich. I'm gonna draw some extra cards here. No Nixonus, okay. You can sack the Archfiend, but it won't quite get seven loyalty, just six. Jump block. This is six damage for them. Plus one here, gain one there. So they take six. They don't want to lose their gigs, huh? I could sacrifice my own gigs or the inti. I have another inti here. Into this of Nixilis. Make some one ones. Sure. 
I don't even know if that's a good line. I could also just make one one one. And drain with the other. You work for me now, Runt. Bought presents, I guess. I mean, yeah, I'm next to this. Well, it's okay here. Not, not not amazing. It's just okay. Attack me. Get a 1-1. One, one. Let's get double block and kill it that way. Or I could just kill off the vampire. I like that. Killing off the vampire. They need to go for the throat here. They give up. Okay. Yeah, I assume they just didn't have a removal for the Archfiend, which... That thing's nasty. <laughs> it sticks around. All right, mirror match, sort of mirror match. I mean, very, very similar lists. They're playing blue, I'm playing red. Um, I think Omnixa is not the greatest, especially not on the draw. I do want the Aklazards. Uh, fourth cutdown I would take. I don't have it though. Um, right out its end, huh? It sweeps away so much of my own stuff. Could be nice on the draw in a right spot. But I don't know. Geeks' command. Maybe. Geeks' command is pretty good in the stack, actually. I'm kind of surprised to only see one copy on the sideboard. I will, I'll try it. It's like you have Tenacious Underdog and Blood Typhus that doesn't hit Geeks and all the big creatures. You ever have <laughs> these two in play? That's a lot of damage. Um, I guess one of Braid is fine. I think Cruelty is too slow. The rest is la la. I don't know. Like they, they do have spells, but they also have a bunch of creatures. And it's not a great top deck. Uh, it's only really good on turn one. So I don't think I want the rest. I don't know. It doesn't seem that appealing. I would have taken Liliana of the Veil. Seems decent. Although there's Spyglass Siren, I guess. Spyglass Siren is pretty annoying, isn't it? Such a good good card against the deep cavern bat. It's always just doesn't feel great when your opponent has Spyglass Siren and you have a bat. And this hand seems pretty good. Passes. Huh. Human. Oh, this is a Phyrexian. So the cavern. Let's see. They have fairy, I guess. Hmm. Alright, I'll play the Inties like this. And I put this on Phyrexian. You have Shieldred and the Archfiend. They're all Phyrexian. This is Phyrexian, so. Alright, fine. I mean, I don't know. I think that's a fine, fine deal for me. Like if, if you take that card, that's okay. Please don't play a preacher here. Jesus Christ. Preacher would be so bad for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, not great for me either. If they kill my gigs, they start drawing cards. Liliana would have been incredible in this spot. Just more removal, I guess. Maybe Brotherhood's End is actually fine. But Brotherhood's End not killing the 2-4? Not great. So yeah, you kind of just want more go for the throat effects, I guess. Oof. Okay, that's it. That's a mirror breaker. I don't have any good way to remove that. Well, that's a start, I guess. That was, I mean, that was a good draw. If, if you don't have a go for the throat, I'm in the game. But if you do, I'm not in the game. Okay, looks like they don't have it. They're drawing another card here. More damage. Oh, there's the go for the throat. No! No! GG. Sorry the Murphless. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good in this matchup, I guess. I, this doesn't sack Planeswalkers, right? Just sacks creatures, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what I'm supposed to do, just do this, I guess. Not great, 
but I got nothing else. Could have taken the Inti there, actually. Goes to 7, they can deal 13 damage. They can deal, put me down to 14 here, and deal me 13 to my face. Yeah. Sounds not optimal. Looks like that's what they're going to do. Okay, yeah, this this Sorin just soloed me. Planeswalkers, huh? Hmm. That could play uh, Blood Art. I, I don't hate that card. Also deals with Aglazards. And randomly deals with a Planeswalker, I guess. But yeah, I don't think Planeswalkers are that prevalent in the format. You could also play Shieldred's Edict, I guess. But that one's pretty bad against Convoke. But good against some other decks. Like Domain. Okay, I guess I'll put this on Phyrexian. They can just get themselves a Gigs, I guess. I'll draw some cards, sure. No shared reds, okay. They can just kill my shield reds, sorry. I mean, I'd be happy if that happens, honestly. I should have cut down this. What am I doing? Jesus. Okay, that was a punt. I was I was just thinking about black removal options you could main deck, but yeah, I had the, I had the opportunity to, to cut down this to deny them one card in hand. Oops. Maybe I can de deny them the map token at least. <laughs> because I made a mistake, they, they're probably thinking I don't have an instant speed removal for the ferry, so maybe, they, maybe they're doing it. They're actually going to kill that with the Sauron. Yeah, I mean, it's not like... Wow, never saw that. Getting eaten by the vamp. 13 life. Big boy. Okay, I just want to concede. How do I beat this card? I don't, right? Hmm. Yeah. I'm having no answers to it. Ah, I have the end. Okay, I need to play that. Yeah, sure. Yep, that was a mistake. The end is also a Planeswalker removal, I guess. I don't know, like, the end seems a good amount worse than Blood Out. Blood Out also kills Ezrim, if that's a problem. Some blue-white players play that, I assume. Long goodbye on top, sure. So, if I have no cards in hand, this draws a card. Yeah, it all makes bad tokens. Okay, yeah, that, that's, I guess, what the end is inside put for. Every, every, everything in one card there. Ito as well. Got some planeswalkers. There's no secret I can't uncover. Okay. I've seen enough. Alright. Um hmm. so Nix is actually good on the play. Maybe. It's sort of an alternative way to Pressure. It's kind of bad against make disappear. Like if you sack a thing into it, you get both copies onto the stack, and your opponent has one creature. They have make disappear. They can sack the creature and counter both copies at the same time. You don't have mana. It's maybe a bit of a corner corner case scenario, which I shouldn't be scared of. Geeks command looked kind of terrible. I'm playing that, I guess. I don't know. I just like everything I have. Like just play to the board. I hope that's enough. That's a good idea. Nixilis. I think 
I don't know. I think just playing to the board is good because there's no sweepers in the matchup. Um, Abnixilis is a bit of a hit or miss card. Like, yeah, sure, it can be good in a certain spot, but the creatures are mostly good at attacking anyways. Like, there's, they don't have good blockers. They have the 2 4, that's it. If, if you get rid of the 2 4, then you can just attack through everything. You attack down planeswalkers and all that. But you need an answer for the preacher. I kind of like that blot out at least for free mana deals with the preacher on turn three if you need to, but it also deals with other problematic things. The end at four mana, it just oh, you cannot pay four mana for a cheap to, like to, to kill a cheap creature. That's not a good idea. Um, yeah, so I don't know how relevant the exiling is. I mean, it is relevant, but like exiling from deck, right? That, that's that's the upside. But I don't know. The tempo is quite important as well. His hand would be perfect with a two drop. I have how many two drops? Four, six, nine, thirteen. Maybe I draw one. Who knows? Who knows? But I only got one turn. Pawn's tanking on the ball again. Obnixus might just be better suited for the sideboard. I don't know. Bit of a weird main deck card again. Like, it has its good matchups, but it also has its bad ones. So, you know, just like Duress, for example, it, it ha yeah, I don't know. It's like maybe better, you know, th th those cards you usually play in the sideboard that have sort of very swingy matchups. I mean, I didn't draw two, but I at least drew something I could cast. Rex turn one is probably. I mean, I guess they have like either underground river, maybe they have shipwreck marsh. I guess. Or just swamps could also be the case. Yeah. Got chill on the cut down. Take the cut down, I assume. The cheapest answer to the bad. Yeah. They have a gigs here. That would not be good for me. But maybe, I don't know. I'm supposed to cast, to, like if I pass with go for the throat, they know my hand. They can just decide to not play anything meaningful and then what do I do? Like go for the throat, the bat. The bat doesn't really, like the cut on the bat, they don't really do much else right now. If they don't have a gigs, I can sort of ignore the bat for a couple turns and just deploy fret after fret and make them have the answer to my thing. Spyglass are again looking kind of nice, just sneaking under things, being relevant, being synergistic with the gigs. Looks like my opponent's missing land drops. Okay, the, the chomping with the siren. Sure. Also, the siren is just nice against gigs. Gigs synergizes well with 1 1 flyers or fairy mastermind, and siren is just good against those. I guess I could have played the Archfiend here. So, so they get to take more damage. Maybe I also don't play any of these. And what's going on here, you know, like could easily be a make disappear. Play Harvester Pass. So 
Let's be a fairy. It's a cut down. Okay. Yeah, it's not great for me. I, I I could have I played around make disappear and I walked into cut down. Not not optimal. Three cards in hand. They activate the reef. Sting does not have death touch, so I would have to go for the road. I mean, it, I don't know what this means. Maybe they have. I think they're not flooding. I don't know what this. Maybe they have a shield or something in hand. Just trying to clear the way. I'm trying to find a spell here I can cast. Okay, that's good enough. Do I just do it now? I think so. I don't want to give them make disappear. Options. They do have a shield with as as I guessed. Go for the roads. Nope. Two cards in hand. I just played Archfiend. Yeah. I'm just praying they don't have a second. Like if they have a second go for the throat, I'm I'm really much in trouble. Okay. Sure. It's funny, like how it comes down to just having go for the throats being the best you can do. Trade. Okay, please don't have it. I guess I would survive. I would go to one. Okay, don't have it. Just have like a bad fairy mastermind. Make this appear. Anything but go for the throat. Okay. Sadly, they're not trading with me. Hmm. That is definitely sad. Very sad. I got pretty punished for not playing a shield at first, I guess. I mean, how could I have known that I have a second shield? But I only play two. Huh. Yeah, I can't really be mad at myself about that one. Um, I could suicide the vents, but just to draw like a card. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Nah, I think I'm just going to... Pass. Let him have some Murex tokens, whatever. I'm a little surprised my opponent didn't go for a trade. I think my opponent has a Fairy Mastermind in their hands. They had priority there. Maybe they have a cut down. They could also still have Make Disappear. I didn't really give them an option.
<laughs> Merix and Meek disappears kind of nice. Interesting. I guess they have cut down in hand. Yeah. So then I'll just kill off the might. All I got. Shieldred versus Geeks and Merexus. It's a fairy. Yeah. The fairy is not that good against Shieldred. But I guess, no, nah, I mean, they're gonna draw extra cards if Geeks. They're gonna lose free life. Aha. They have the blood out. Okay. Better configuration wins the matchup. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just played one creature at a time. I didn't really have any way to gain card advantage. No bank bust or anything like that. There's my in I guess the blue-black deck just does better in, in these fights, maybe? Because it has some... I don't know. I mean, the red cards... I guess the red cards don't really add much, huh? Just power. 3-2 in What makes it this? I guess the more I think about it, the red cards don't seem much better than the blue cards, huh? They hit a little harder. But you get... You get Make Disappear on Color Magic, which is pretty good against big stuff. Fightbinder. Hmm. Alright, let's play some more. Harvesters. Vampires, huh? Let's go. Good deck in, uh, in Pioneer. Kumano faces Kakazan. All right. Cool. Cool aggro. Preacher. Preacher is good in these in these types of matchups. Harvester is also great. And there we gain a little bit of an edge compared to something like. Um, blue black, because we have Blood Tide, which is pretty good defensively against these aggressive decks, where the blue-black deck has like, you know, Fairy Mastermind and Spyglass Siren. They're less good against stuff like this. Oh, oh, okay. All right, so you get to have a card advantage engine at some point. Let's hope this preacher can hold the ford. Oh yeah, this is an excellent draw from their deck. I mean, it's gonna be tough to win. Everybody getting in there, yeah. Monstrous rage or something like that. Yeah. That's five damage to my face. Six damage even. Yikes. Okay, this didn't this this was not even close to being close. I'm just getting overrun here. Okay. Pretty impressive. I guess they're playing green for questing druid. Ay 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 ay. Whoa. This <laughs> slaughter. What a slaughter. I guess Kumano is still the best one drop in the in the format. On turn one, the card is just very difficult to beat. 
Uh, give me that axle as lots, I guess. Give me Hitsugo. Rattle Sand. Kicks. The rest, maybe? I guess Inti is a little better than the, the underdog. I think the big the big stuff is good. But like the four drops are good here. Like uh the six six is very good against Witch Stalker Frenzy. Yeah. Okay. This is actually a pretty nice hand. I'm gonna take the Kumano and turn one here. And have cut down for the two drop. Lephomantic Barrage. What? Huh? Am I missing something? Why is that Kalama upon his deck? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yeah, I guess that happened. The Forge. I do have some answers for that. I guess Blue Black didn't have answers for that. So there's, there's a difference there. All the Black Leaf Cliffs. Alright, I feel pretty good about this game. I got my, my big demon out. Yeah, <laughs> upon degrees. Okay. A braid comes in, I suppose. In the underdraw out. Mm. Makes this. In some way gains life, but it's a bit convoluted, so I think I'm gonna pass. I think this is good. Oh, just gotta survive, stick a four drop and ride that to victory, have some removal early, do rest. Turn one is nice. And then we're good to go. Yeah, I'm not gonna mulligan this. I'm missing the, the payoff. I only have interaction, but no Kumano, can't lose. And there we go. There's the plan. The five drop plan. Play with fire, sure. Elden. I wish they'd be a little reckless, <laughs> just by off a rage. But uh, no, no such luck, I guess. Ooh, good draw. Oh, that, that was also a good draw. No frenzy, no nothing. What? What did I draw? A bunch of pump spells? Uh, I don't even know. Uh, I guess I'm low on red mana, so I want it on Vampire for Blood Life Harvester. Seems good. In case I draw that, I can go upgrade plus Blood Life now. I mean, the case is not that threatening when you can't empty your hand. You literally have to have zero cards in hand. Could have a code breaker here. Doesn't really do much. You can flip it out for four mana and draw three. That doesn't seem impressive. I think I get to draw two cards and make two vampires here. Right? That's how it works, right? Yeah. Crazy. So good.
No, case didn't really convince me there. Okay, then gonna go for that. I mean, I think they, yeah, they're just happy to to get rid of cards in hand, I suppose. This obviously is not particularly good for them. That preacher draw drew two cards and made two vampires. <laughs> then, it, then it traded with two cards. Just tells you how good preacher is, really. <laughs> nice. Okay. Nice. Pick your poison. All right. Okay. It all it all was a plan. Pick your poison. Pretty good against the, the demon. Um. That's sixteen. I guess I'll go with Shieldred. Gain some life while I draw a card here. I get to, I get to do it again. <laughs> I just have seen enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Shieldred is pretty brutal against the Poles, isn't it? <laughs> They draw two, lose four, draw another one for the draw step, lose another two. Yep. Pretty good, pretty good. All right. Easy mulligan. I guess I'm keeping. Put this on Vampire. And I think I just bought him down tree and Preacher is such a good card. I don't have a guarantee of hitting my uh, fourth land. I only have two right now, so I think it's a bit safer. Swamp, proving ground, bushwhack. Is this, this some sort of... Where's Vampire? There's Vampire. Is this some sort of... Um... Yeah, it's gotta be, right? Green, black, Phyrexian Obliterator. Ooh. Lillian of the Veil. We hate that, we hate that. Retro it up. 20 life each. I would get both. We don't kill it. We do kill it. It's hmm. unfortunate. I guess I'll just cut this cut down. Mosswood Dread Knight. Mm. Just play another preacher, right? Uh, it just dies to that, huh? Hmm. Liliana just knocked it out of the park here. Such a high upside card. Like, when it's good, it's insane. Oof. It's very good against this deck, specifically. It's not so good against Spyglass Siren. <laughs> not a point for Spyglass Siren. Um, I could up Nixilis Minus. Then they plus the Lily again. I don't really have pressure on the Lily. Ugh. Brutal. I... I think I will just play gigs and yeah, just take the the double kill there. I'm also discarding Moss with Dread Knight is like Yeah, I I, I don't know. <laughs> it's not a good sign for me. Like deciding that the other two cards are better than a Moss with Dread Knight against a black and range deck here. They have another Lily. Playing it practically. Just absolutely brutalizing me here. Jesus. I don't even know what I like. Oh, that is that is a good card against Liliana. Wish I would have had that earlier. Oh, huh. I think I'm just gonna attack Lily. Or play up Nixilis. And uh, make a 1-1. One, one. Then they might then they plus and I lose that. Okay, fine. I'll, I don't know what the right call is there, but I'm, I'm just going to go with this one here. I could also blood away the, the, the underdog in case I hit a land, I can play it. Nah, I think I'll keep the, I'll keep the blood around for later. Muscle Dread Knight, that's a nice green, green black card. A very nice one. Pretty good in these... Like, I could see green black maybe has a good shot against um, the other black decks because the Dread Knight is so good. Uh, here, I'm definitely gonna discard the.
and the dark. Also nice in Black Mirrors, I guess. Just being able to come back, continuous value. Cool. Opponent. They kept some card. I guess they kept like Tear Sunder and Liliana instead of the Mosswood. Run, Jesus. Okay. Opponent's prepared, huh? For the. The black mid range fights. Hey. This thing is indestructible even in my turn, huh? In their turn. Okay, cool. I guess I can race it. Mm hmm. Sure. Go for the throat. I'm just gonna pump this. I'm gonna double block the bat. Sure. Okay, and I'm at. Well, that uh, that that doesn't work. No. Okay, I go to eleven. <laughs> what the frick? Okay, sure. Guess they gave their thing vigilance. Hmm. So play the land. I just want with Indian play. I just want more mana. I think. This has trample too. Yeah. Go to six. If I blitz here, I go to four, get a one one block, take four trample, gain one, so I technically would survive, but I would be at one life. Uh, I guess I could discard the gopher throw and play an inti. No, no, I don't have lethal next turn. Hmm. Funny deck. This this this, this person is just clearly trying to beat out of black mid range decks. I would guess, like double run in the main deck. This is actually not that good here. Why? I think you should just attack. I can't reanimate this. So if you put me to one, I can't get this back. So you should have attacked. I think. Now I'm just gonna do this. You're not gonna win this game. You guys are not instructable right now. Yeah, I think that was. Yeah, they should have attacked. <clears throat> okay, Lil Yana's and uh... yeah. <laughs> Talking about blot out again, right? Like blot out just solves issues from an uh, issue found. I guess I have Gix's command for it. Uh the Obnixilis. I mean it's good against Liliana, I guess. Cut down. Don't even have annoyed with affliction. So the moss wood could become a problem. <laughs> Liliana really wrecks me. Especially when they're on the play. I don't know if I want to rest for it though. The underdog was great. Cruelty of geeks. I think on the play maybe, but on the draw it seems a bit slow. Just hope they don't have Liliana. 
Oh, uh, that's not a good idea. I think I need some duress. Got an Archfiend. Archfiend, not the best card against multiple Lilianas. I assume, yeah, my opponent must go for the throw, tear asunder, so like they can deal with a, an Archfiend quite well. Archfiend shines against something like Convoke, lots of small creatures. Okay, I'm keeping. Hand is bad against Liliana, really bad, but I got some cards. Um, yeah, mulliganing either. Like, this is a grindy matchup, you can't really mulligan. Like, sure, I'm missing a third land, but I have everything else. You know, not everything else, but like a plausible hand. Okay, that's a lot of NT. Da da! I'm not surprised. Just a beating. Tenacious Underdark. At least I can discard that. It's not too bad. Mm hmm. Nice. They have the cottage now. They would have had a cottage last game, I would not have won. That cottage would have killed me. Jesus, unlucky. Oh well. I mean, if I draw a land, I have double preacher. They, if they have a bad hand, it could be good enough. Discard, uh, sure. Tear asunder. Yikes. Liliana is just absolutely destructing me. I know destructing is not a word, but I feel like it describes the situation very well. Hmm, there you go. The big boy in the house. Whenever a source deals damage. I should not have played the lamb, maybe. Should have kept it to discard the lily. Yeah, that was maybe loose. Mmm, nice. Okay. Hmm. Well, that was not even close to being close. Yeah, punch should not attack the obliterator, I think. Uh, I guess maybe I should. Oh, I'm not getting a 1-1 one -one because it has to attack. This isn't helping it has to attack the player. Yeah. So if I kill that, I still take 10. Jesus. That was not being done. That was not close. Not close at all. Cruelty. Yeah, going into this, this red black deck looked kind of nice. Now, I don't know, there's, there's too many weaknesses to it, I feel like. It's too one dimensional. Just plays a dude after a dude, but it doesn't even play it at a very fast pace. I mean, I kept this hand very quickly, but actually, the more I think about it, this hand is actually really bad. Especially against my opponent if they just have like Liliana. It's just too much removal. I guess the, the vents helps maybe a little. Oh. Yeah, this is not good for me. I'm just gonna take the Dreadnought. I'm just gonna... Hopefully I draw some creature next turn to make the Lily a little less good. Oops. That didn't work out. At least if they play Lily here, I can, I can attack if the restless wins. 
But yeah, I'm just so dead again, I feel like. Like they have they have just a better deck for this matchup. They're just so much better prepared. Off you go. Okay. I guess. That, that thing deals damage. I can win if this thing just survives. Like then I just win this game. I guess I, I have to attack the Lily. There's no way around that. Okay, opponent's at 19. Luck the after all. I'm gonna killing you. Uh, they go to 17. Down to 11. Down to 5. Well, this is good for me. Archfiend of the draws, huh? No removal. Gets the job done, maybe? Do I play the bat? I guess so. Whoa, opponent, you are loose. They had the option to tear asunder my, my demon and didn't take it? Wow. Just instead playing a Glisser? That is nuts. Yeah. That's... Brave. Or Reckless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's just no, no other comment to be made about that. You have the Tear Sunder, you have a 6-6 six, six Fly, you have more cards than your opponent. You 100% use your turn to cast Tear Sunder instead of playing a Glisser. No question about that. Not at all. Well, I got lucky there. My opponent um, made some incorrect choices. But yeah, this red black deck is just. I feel like the green black version here has the edge. Just better, better cards. Harder to deal with stuff. Muscle Dread Knight seems excellent. Um, the blue black one has Counterspell, it has Spyglass Siren, which is nice. Yeah, I don't know. I, I could see. And this red black deck is just not good enough. I guess it deals more damage against like slower decks. Um, but that's about it. And then it seems like the mid range fights are very important. And then the mid range fights didn't really convince me. So yeah, that's sort of my verdict on the deck. Um, definitely not a bad one. Um, Piotra, again, congrats for the top eight. Um, but I think it is like maybe teeny tiny bits, bit worse than the other black mid range versions. Um, but they're all very close in power level, of course, and all have their little advantages. I mean, Brotherhood's End is a, is a strong card against, you know, some random decks um, that you only get in red. So there's that. All right. Anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll try to make more content definitely in April. I have the Arena Championship coming up on the weekend. You can watch me play there, Explorer and Draft. That's going to be, there's going to be coverage as well. Um, I'm pumped for that. And yeah, I was just really busy this month with, you know, moving a new apartment search. I finally found a place, uh, luckily. And um, I just have to get all that done, then move on the 1st of April. And then when I'm in a new place, I, I finally will make more time to, you know, just embrace magic, embrace the content and uh, play, play on stream as well. I'm planning to do that. But yeah, all that coming in April. Take care, guys.